What's up guys, this is Heiss, and today we have a pretty fun look at a vintage safety video. Now anyone who's been a part of railroading, uh, whether in the modern day or previously, or tourist railroad or class one, everyone's familiar with the safety class, and these days safety classes tend to involve uh, an infamous safety video, and it, these days they're kind of bland and modern, but the railroads have been doing it for a long time, and this came up in conversation with me and some of my friends recently, and there is like a 1950s Rio Grande safety video, and it's got steam engines in it, like that's how old this is, and they do some stuff in it. it it's a little slow to start, but they just decide to do some practical stunts for the sake of illustrating the point, and the narrator is just the most, like, sarcastic, stabbing guy. Like, the the little quotes and tidbits he puts in are hilarious. So, uh, we're going to do a Railroader Reacts video with this, and we're going to react to this 1950s-era Rio Grande safety video. Let's check it out. And I'm going to give my commentary alongside and in between, so if you want to watch the whole unedited thing, the links are down in the description. Use your head! Should tell you what you need to know. And limbs, both, both at the same time. The safety of the men throughout his widespread Look department that truck. is an important matter with A.E. Perlman, chief engineer of the Rio Grande. He has a wholehearted respect for every man who helps to prove that railroading is not a dangerous game. That the stigma of danger has been created by negligence, thoughtlessness, and inattention to common sense safety practices. Perlman makes it a point to call attention to good safety records. Some time ago, he personally congratulated all the men working under this roadmaster's jurisdiction. They had achieved a commendable safety record, maintaining 250 miles of track for a year without a reportable injury. The safety record's directly proportional to how big the mustache is. Just saying. <laughs> And so far, what, they, what they're saying is true and is definitely something that the modern railroad still preaches on, which is, hey, the, the danger is out there only when you're inattentive and you're not taking care of things the right way. You have to be in the way for the train to come get you. It's still very true to this day. They proved, as thousands of other railroaders have proved, that you can work around the clock and around the calendar if you simply use your head. Think safety and work safely. But don't do that. Still don't do that. Railroading and football have a lot in common. There's the little bit the public sees, and behind the scenes there's the endless planning and working and perfecting that they don't see. Very it all true. Adds up to teamwork. Whether you're a football player or a section hand, teamwork gets the job done. Teamwork calls for a lot of skull practice. That's a football phrase for use your head, pal. The football team has a captain. He supervises the play. The section foreman does the same thing. He checks that lineup in the morning and all through the day. He has the current timetable, the correct time, and permission to use the main track. His first responsibility is the protection of his men. He has to be alert and thinking ahead every minute. Safety depends on teamwork, and teamwork starts when you roll out that motor car in the morning. Every day you chalk up here is a score against injury and death. You put that on at the end of the day, bud. Check times and line up before you put that car on the track. After you tangle with a train, it's too late. So this is funny because this looks so antiquated these days with now that we have high rails, on track equipment, all that sort of stuff, looking at the speeder and seeing it in regular railroad service and the, the gang of guys is just grabbing it out the shed is like, this feels so antiquated, but in this era, it would have been the cool stuff. <laughs> that car, a thorough inspection foreman, the safety of you and your men depends on it. If there's anything wrong, now's the time to fix it, not later. With that car and those tools and everything else you do, develop the habit of being neat. It goes hand in hand with safety. They're both plain common sense. Check your tools every morning. Don't take out a defective tool. Good tools do a safe job. Poor tools imperil your safety. Fit a piece of air hose around the striking face to prevent splintering at the edges. Don't endanger yourself by using a defective tool. 
It's your responsibility to report it to your foreman. It's his responsibility to take the faulty tool out of service and replace it with a serviceable tool. It's still the truth. Teamwork and skull practice pay off here. Every man in the right place for the job. Good footing. Lifting with your legs instead of your back. Keeping your feet in the clear. I always thought those little speeder sheds are neat like that. The parallel track, it never made sense when I was younger, but Safety includes makes sense now. Things, like twisting Lizzie's tail. It may kick, so don't put your thumb around that handle. Have good balance. Keep your face and body clear of the crank. That was our do. Here's our not to do. Sloppy habits breed trouble. If you throw your tools on there any which way, you probably do your work like that, too. And a disorderly gang is merely the reflection of a sloppy foreman. What do you have? Teamwork or hard work? A gang without <laughs> ran over that guy's foot. Of energy and always <laughs> runs the risk of work. Merely the reflection of a sloppy foreman. What do you have? Teamwork or hard work? <laughs> he actually did it. A gang without teamwork wastes a lot of energy <laughs> and always runs the risk of an accident. No inspection, no check on the time or lineup. Nothing but grief and bad tempers. Off they go, hell bent for trouble. Dropped a shovel, never missed it. <laughs> no insurance company would take the risk on a gang like this. Sassy narrator they begins. Didn't miss the shovel, but that bar may give them a bad time. If it falls under a wheel, it'll bounce them up plenty. The foreman had a short day but he sure got it the hard way. Sped up footage, Probably but... won't enjoy the extra hours of leisure. That's a close call. Not keeping a sharp lookout for grade crossings is a good way to keep from living a long time. Give him hell. He's got it coming. He's a pretty good Joe in a lot of ways, but awful short on brains. He endangered his men, picked up a body full of sprains and bruises, smashed up his motor car. Speaking of smashing up motor cars, they must have had a couple that they were just looking to get rid of for this film because they're not nice to the equipment in this film. Yeah, just T-bone the thing. It's fine. We can do that. It's fine. And then, you know, do some, some somersaults afterwards. Really sell it. <laughs> and that sign was there riding with him all the time. Safety first. Uphill slow, downhill fast, tonnage for a safety last. When you go romping down the country without checking your lineup or watching for unscheduled traffic, you're inviting the kiss of death. Maybe you'll get hit over the head with a high-balling locomotive. That's a light engine, 200 tons light. There have been men who weren't able to jump soon enough. <laughs> like I said, they just had some Fairmont Spears that they wanted to destroy. <laughs> Here, we want to put this scene into a safety video. Like, you don't know what's going to happen, but they did it anyways. <laughs> oh, you love it. Whenever you get off your motor car to do some work, set the car off, too, where it won't foul the track. Even if the work is just a few steps away, use that set off. It may save your neck. Get that car off the track. You think that's carrying safety too far? Overdoing it? Go read the record. It happened just this way, right on this spot. Some of you knew him. A lot of you heard about it afterwards. Maybe you forgot about it. Anyway, here's how it happened. He didn't hear that train until it was almost on top of him. Then he tried desperately to yank his car off the track. Nobody knows what he was thinking just then. Probably figured he could jump clear. He was riding his luck, but death was riding the head end. A thousand tons of freight slapped him on the back. A trainman came on the run. He might as well have walked. Can't help a corpse. They picked the pieces of the car from the front of the engine. That's the car he didn't set off because he wasn't going to be there very long. But he stayed there quite a while. Then the coroner came.
That's how a negligent signal maintainer turned into a vital statistic before his time. He got his name in the papers, but nobody reads his own obituary. It's all in the record. You'll find him there, a figure on the fatality list. Do you like your wife and kids? Do you like to eat? Do you like to dance, to tip a beer with the boys, or play poker with your pals? If you do, take a look at the record sometime. Let it sink in good. So, not only did they have some motor cars that they wanted to destroy, but they also really wanted the message to sink in. Okay, so they're playing a little extra ridiculous. They had, obviously, a ragdoll dummy or, or crash test dummy or something when the engine hits it, right? But it sells the fact of, like, yeah, don't do this. And they were using a real incident to sell it, so they weren't... They were not applying any corporate schlocky whatever. They were selling the facts the best way they could to the whole company. It's like, oh, that's a little much. And then the narrator, I just love, like, they must have just got the sassiest guy out there to come play this and just like, hey, come up with the best lines you can and then just deadpan deliver him. The trainman came at a run. He may as well have been walking. <laughs> just like, oh, okay, that's that's fine. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> Corpse doesn't read his own paper. Eh, a, little, a little gruesome, but hey, sells the message, right? <laughs> Good God. A safety-minded foreman who thinks ahead spreads his men out before they come to any grief. An aligning bar is no substitute for a rail fork. If you use the wrong tool, you suffer the consequences. Safer always to use the tool designed for the job. Know the right tool to use, and know how to use it. Even a claw bar is dangerous in the hands of a careless man. Place your hands far enough down on the claw bar to avoid smashing them on the opposite rail. Yeah, uh, maintenance of way or MOW work has always kind of been the, the black sheep, not fun, not sexy thing of the railroad world. And always been the most important, making sure that the track and the, and the alignment and everything's just right so that the trains can do what they need to do. But in this era, God, it sucks even worse. <laughs> Anyone who's worked modern day MOW watching these guys, I mean, there plenty of the tasks are still, still around and, and you have to do them this way. But uh, we've been blessed by a lot of machinery, although not, not necessarily at the, uh, the short lines. So you guys probably know this pain. A good foreman and smart men get the job done safely. But they didn't smarten up until after they'd ruined a man's foot one day. They never paid much attention to carrying a rail before that, but lack of coordination made the task difficult and dangerous. They were all stepping on a rail instead of over it. One man slept and another man was caught. They all wised up after that, but it didn't make the injured man feel any better. Uh, no, it didn't. <laughs> he did a stretch on crutches. Found out they're not much of a substitute for healthy legs and feet. Sassy narrator at it again. If you like to get around on your own two feet, give them the protection they deserve. Look at him gripe. Yesterday, he scoffed at safety shoes. Give your feet the right kind of protection and you get a different answer. He can still smile. Safety shoes are a lot easier on the feet than the plaster shoes the hospital puts out. Sassy narrator again. <laughs> a foreman's most important duty and responsibility is the protection of his men. Don't hesitate to send out flagmen whenever the need arises and send them out far enough to flag the heaviest and fastest trains. A gang concentrating on its work must be protected from train movements at all times. A good flagman will go a mile or more before sending his torpedoes and taking up his post. Constant vigilance is a prime safety factor. The lie of the land, the nature of the work being done, the weather and visibility. All these govern how many flagmen or special lookouts are needed and where they should be stationed to provide ample protection from approaching traffic. So, cool appearance of a C-48, I think. Big 280 rear grand engine. Um, but it's it's really neat to see that because that's something that 
isn't quite typical anymore in modern day railroading where typically dispatch is giving us clearance and we have signals to protect everything and then they can set the blocks to red if somebody has a form B out so that they're going to go work on the track like this. Uh, and that can even be enforced by PTC if the subdivision is equipped. And they're even talking about in the future equipping PTC on the track equipment so that if there's a, like a ballast regulator or a tamper or something on the main track, PTC will know whether or not dispatch set up the work zone or whatever PTC can tell the trains, Hey, you know, like we're very far removed from this where this guy literally walked a mile out, set torpedoes down in the event that he wasn't there. Or the engine couldn't stop or whatever, which is basically a bomb that affixes to the rail so that when the train runs over it, it goes bang, which per the special instructions or the timetable, Bang, you know, you're slowing down on the brakes. You're grabbing the brakes right away as soon as you hear a torpedo. I mean, it's a, hey, you need to stop kind of signal. Um, and then he's got his flag and gets up and uh, gets up in the engine and rides with the engineer to the, the closest the engineer can get. You know, his whole point of being so far out was so that he could catch a fast moving train and then bring it up close. And then when the guy's clear, then they can ride through and all that. So definitely a, uh, a vintage way of doing things, although I'm sure it still does happen this way in some places. Failing to protect his gang is the worst mistake a foreman can make. These men are working at the mouth of a tunnel deep in a canyon around a blind curve on mainline track where traffic is heavy. The foreman is forced by close clearances to place a track jack inside the rail. That definitely calls for a flag. And the flagman who should have been on the job before all the rest hasn't even started yet. Sassy narrator. You can hear him getting mad. A half hour too late, the foreman checks the time. Suddenly, a diesel horn stabs the air. Can't run in the, the gauge, but The foreman yells a warning, shouts orders in all directions. The flagman charges up the track, flagging wildly. The jack is stuck. It can derail the train. Frantically, they try to free it. The train can't stop. At the last moment, the jack comes out and they dive for safety only a moment before the engine thunders by. That foreman jeopardized his men, endangered a train, its crew, and cargo, all because he didn't know, didn't care, or didn't think. Use your head. <laughs> Coming through the records of railroaders who went west before their time, you find that many of them actually committed suicide. Inattention, negligence, common carelessness were the instruments of death. Here's one straight from the record. A slide fence is a precarious place to work while a train is passing. The rule of safety is to climb down to the ground and get clear of the fence and track when a train approaches. This man knew that rule. For some reason known only to him, he broke it. The roar of that train is the voice of doom. Get down, man. Get down. At the crucial moment, he can't get loose. He freezes from fright, faints, and the engine wallops him over the head. Death climbed that pole and tagged him out. Every safety rule grows out of tragedy and grim experience. The very existence of the rule is proof that men were maimed or died because they didn't have that rule to go by. Never forget that. That's absolutely the truth. You know, it, it is fun to watch this and, and giggle at the way that they filmed it and the fact that they went to such extreme lengths to show some of these concepts and things and, and the fact that they used uh, real incidents as reference. Like, this happened to somebody and that's why the rule came around, right? Um, the saying on the railroad always has been, the rules are written in blood. Somebody got hurt, somebody got maimed, somebody died because this rule was broken, that rule was broken, or didn't exist yet. And so now we have those rules, and that's where this history comes from and where the safety culture comes from and why it's really important to focus on that. So as fun as this video is, the, the message is still really true. So it's definitely applicable to modern-day railroading, although uh, we probably maintain our slide fences a little bit differently these days. I don't know. Some of you knew that man. Some of you didn't. The important thing to remember is that what happened to him can happen to you. Whenever you break a rule born of another man's misfortune, you're asking for it, begging for the same treatment he got. Just play dead, buddy. Whether you repair fences or swing a pick or buck a barco tamper or do any of a thousand jobs, it can happen to you if you don't know and... All right, I'm going to drop you on the floor. Continue playing dead. ...for that particular job. Today, only one man gets hurt for every ten men who got it 20 years ago. 
That means you're heading in the right direction. But the one it's man probably a dummy for that shot. He's I don't not know. Not going to feel any better about it, and his family is not going to find any consolation either when they go looking for a casket. Just in case they didn't sell the message yet. Here you go. Still not sold? Have another shot. We paid this lady to film this. Be sad. Look at caskets. A good safe scaffold has plenty of planking and guardrails to prevent falls. If any question arises, put on another board. You can't go wrong on that. Test every plank and guardrail before you put it on the scaffold. A board that can't take this treatment should never leave the ground. <laughs> it's a very scientific test. What if you get Fat Guy Bob? What, what like... None of the boards are safe. When you put the board on, use plenty of nails. They're cheaper than accidents, so fasten it securely. In that case, take a lesson from what happened to this man. It never occurred to him either until that crucial moment when his wrench slipped and he slipped with it. Just fall off the building for us real quick. Owie. He was out cold and pretty well broken up when the men got to him. He didn't die. But for months after that, he had nothing to do except lie flat on his back and think about the guardrail that wasn't there. Making it twice as tough was the realization that he had no one but himself to blame for the shape he was in. What's the value of an eye? <laughs> priceless! For objectively to still there, okay. Yes, priceless. <laughs> Protect your eyes at all costs. They're delicate and irreplaceable. 24 hours a day, your own safety is your own responsibility. But on the job, the foreman is equally responsible. When he calls you about those goggles hanging uselessly around your neck, when he makes you put them on, he's not batting his gums just to be bossy. He's doing you a good turn, reminding you before you suffer the consequences of your own neglect. You always feel bossy telling guys to put their PPE on. Spoilers. When I yeah, when I was management at BNSF, I'd be like, dude, st put just put the safety glasses on. Uh, j just put them on. Don't make me make you watch this video that's gonna show you eyeballs. <laughs> Spoilers again. Protect your eyes every instant, and you'll never need a seeing eye dog. Sassy narrator. Whenever you get a notion that those goggles are a nuisance, or that your foreman's harping about eye protection is a lot of baloney, think of yourself in this fellow's shoes. Would you rather wear goggles or pedal brooms? It's all up to you. Sometimes there's a wise guy in the crowd. Nobody can tell him anything. Sometimes? No goggles, just looking for trouble. And didn't see it when it came. Or ever That's again. That's all it takes to lose an eye. How would you like to go through this operation three or four times a day for the rest of your life? Not pleasant to think about, is it? And it can happen to you, too. Every moment that you work with your goggles hanging around your neck or in your pocket, when they should be protecting your eyes, you're pushing your luck, asking for what this man got. Yes, it can happen to you. You can buy new eyes. They may make you look better, but they can't see for you. Those eyes you have right now, the ones that are looking at this motion picture. You can't get any more like them. Did we not sell this your for you? Blind darkness behind glassy artificial eyes. So use your goggles every moment you need them. Uh, that should be an emoji. You watch those trains with interest and satisfaction too, because that traffic is your bread and butter. Choo -choo. You build safety into that track and take reasonable Why didn't they save one of those? Use your head. <laughs> there you go. Use your head, man. Use your head. <laughs> what a silly thing. Uh, it's, it's a well put together video, specifically focusing on MOW type stuff, and of course, but um, it's a lot more fun to watch through that safety video than a lot of the modern ones. And of course, it's always neat to see all the old engines, but they did a really good job. Uh, maybe too good of a job of overselling some of the aspects and really pushing it. And and there wasn't really any fakeness to it. Whereas a lot of days it's like, okay, well, let's see how, how corporate and perfect this can be. So it's fun to take a look at this old stuff sometimes. So I'm glad that this is posted out there. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this in my commentary. And as we said in the beginning, the links to the full versions unedited and a no commentary by me are down in the description. So check them out if you like. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching.